Hi, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So there's one antenna design which I've never really experimented with, and that's the magnetic loop. Now, there are many different designs of magnetic loops, but fundamentally, they're all quite similar in the way they work. Now, before we start looking at this specific magnetic loop, let's take a closer look at how they work and what's the pros and cons of using them. Now, regular antennas work by receiving the electrical field portion of a radio wave. A small current is then transduced on the antenna and the receiver amplifies this and then demodulates this to audio. However, magnetic loops work in a different way. They actually transduce the magnetic portion of the radio wave and therefore it's essentially an LC tuned circuit. So the basic principle of a magnetic loop is to have a primary coupling loop, which is connected to the 50 ohm coax. And then you have a secondary resonant loop. Now on this diagram, we can see a high voltage variable capacitor, which is used for tuning. The variable capacitor can either be rotated by hand or some users have opted to attach a geared motor to remotely control the tuning of the capacitor. Now one other interesting fact shown on this particular diagram is the top view radiation pattern. We can clearly see that looking down from above, our power lobes are left and right, and we have a very strong nose at the top and the bottom, i.e. the sides of the loop when it's mounted up. This means that it can actually be used on a rotator and be used to null out some interference, a bit like when you use a beam antenna. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of magnetic loops? Well, they are quiet as they are not affected by electrical interference. They are relatively small for the given wavelength. So for example, 20 meters or 14 megahertz would only require a loop of a size of two meters. They can also be mounted close to the ground, which makes them easily maintained and extremely portable. Now, many users have opted for portable operations by mounting a loop on a tripod. I think the advantages totally outweigh the disadvantages but those disadvantages would be that they require high voltage and high current variable capacitors. They have a very low radiation resistance and they have an extremely narrow bandwidth. Now having that remote tuning option on a magnetic loop really does take out the hassle of the tuning due to the narrow bandwidths. So instead of building my own, I decided to purchase a magnetic loop from 2E0ERO, who's based here in the UK. He manufactures these loops at home according to your requirements. And best of all, he ships worldwide. So wherever you are in the world, you can go ahead and order one. Now, I'm not easily impressed when it comes to homemade kits or products. But when I took this magnetic loop out of the box, I literally said to myself, this is a thing of beauty. The quality of this build is far beyond something I would expect from being built at home. And the capacitor plates are also CNC milled in house, all the plastic parts are designed and 3D printed in house and the coax used for the loop is Andrew Helix, which gives the best possible quality whilst keeping the cost to a minimum. Now the loop I ordered from Adrian covers 40 to 10 meters. There's also a band switch on the loop which helps tuning from 40 to 17 meters and then when switched the loop will cover 20 to 10 meters. Now of course if you need to, an ATU can also be used to help with the higher bands. Also with my order, I asked for the remote tuning version, which comes with a nice little 3D printed controller, which you just need to supply 12 volts to. This then plugs into the motor at the bottom of the variable capacitor. Now, ignoring the state of my garden here, I just wanted to show you how I've mounted this magnetic loop. Now it's around three meters off the ground and it's pointing east to west. Maybe in the future, if I can afford to purchase a rotator, I will perform some further tests altering its position, but for now, I'll leave it pointing east to west. Now, when it comes to tuning the magnetic loop, it is best to adjust your radio to the desired frequency. You can then use the fast button to quickly find the maximum noise level on your radio, and then using the direction switch along with the slow button, you can fine tune for the lowest SWR. For me, I place the radio in AM or FM if you need to and adjust the power to 5 watts. Briefly press the PTT to read the SWR and then adjust the loop's capacitor accordingly. 
Now, if you do find that you found the lowest SWR point by turning the capacitor and it's still not low enough, you can use an ATU to bring it down further. Obviously though, for peak performance, you do want to adjust the tuning capacitor until you get the best reading before using an ATU. Now the band conditions at the time of recording this video were absolutely dire, or there just wasn't many stations active. But I did want to work a contest station based in Russia on 20 meters, and here's what happened. Mexico Zero Delta Queen Whiskey. Uh, Mexico Zero Delta Queen Whiskey. Yeah, Mexico Zero Delta Queen Whiskey, 30 watts. Mexico Zero again. Yeah, Mexico Zero Delta Queen Whiskey, Delta Queen Whiskey, Delta Queen Whiskey, QSL. Roger, thank you, sir. 59 Kilo Oscar 91. Yeah, I'm uh, India Oscar 91, India Oscar 91, India Oscar 91, QSL. Yes, 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 QSL. Sorry, good luck. So it took a couple of attempts to make contact, but as he said, he was suffering with QSB, which is signal fading. Now I went on to have a few more QSOs on 20 meters and 40 meters, nothing spectacular or rare DX because conditions were really that poor. The other contributing fact could be that the position I've got the loop in, which is why having a rotator further down the line might prove useful. Now later in the evening, 40 meters seemed to become a bit more active with the conditions improving. Well, there we go, guys. That's a brief look at magnetic loop antennas and specifically this one built by 2E0ERO. Now, he does have a Facebook page where you'll be able to go and find out more information about this product and you'll also be able to contact him if you wish to order one. I'll also leave some further links down in the description of this video. Now, until the next video, take care, stay safe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.